Real-time tactics. Now, there is a term we should really have a show for soon. Because there is a lot of meaning behind it, a lot of different meaning. To some, a real-time tactics game would be something akin to the Gettysburg series made by Sid Meier, a game that aims to give the player control over an accurate-ish representation of a combat scenario. One where you either control lots of units or a couple of representations of large numbers of units. It depends on when they were made. But on the other hand, what really pops to mind when you think about real-time tactics is one sort of formula, one that really blew up in the late 90s and in the early 2000s. One that was defined by the people at a little studio from Spain called Pyro Studios, with a game called Commandos. Now, Commandos wouldn't be a first in most of the things it did. Small-scale real-time tactics games were a thing since even before the Age of Syndicate, the classic game made by Bullfrog, not the shooter that Electronic Arts made to capture capitalize on the marketing campaign of Deus Ex Human Revolution, though it did have one very interesting take on the genre. Whereas in Syndicate you could control people that can be referred to as Terminators, in Commandos you controlled flesh and blood human beings, very perishable ones that tended to die quite easily, and if just one of them died, your whole campaign was over. You could not continue, you had to load a save, you had to reset start that mission because you would need these people, these individuals, these characters throughout your entire endeavor to sabotage the Third Reich. You would rarely go into a mission with the objective of just killing wave after wave of enemies or entire platoons, entire squads. You basically just had to sabotage things or in the more difficult missions you had to kidnap high-level Nazi operatives. You would have to go into the wolf's lair and snatch the very beast out of its hovel. And that took two things. Time and planning. Well, actually it took three things. Time, planning, well no, it took four things. Time, planning, trial and error. Because in Commandos you were never in a position to just charge the enemy. You never had the upper hand. You were always outgunned, outnumbered, out everything. This was a game of stealth. This was a game that forced you to think your every movement, to be on the lookout for even where the enemy looked before you made a single step. You even had to be careful where you took that step because if it was on snow, the enemy would notice it and would come running. It would know that someone else was there. Now granted, you could make a lot of noise running and they wouldn't care, a sound was not implemented in the first game as a fully fleshed out mechanic for the enemy detecting you, that would come in the later games. So you could, in theory, just run up behind someone and stab them in the neck. Though then you would have the problem of there being a dead body down there and where the enemy did have a few issues with um, not seeing bodies properly, if there were a lot of them and if they already saw them I and mean, if an alarm was already triggered, they would notice if the person they just talked to was suddenly dead on the snow and someone was standing next to them with a knife. But the thing is that the, the enemies, the Nazis in, uh, in Commandos didn't behave well, they mostly didn't behave like your average kill on sight kind of enemies. They would kill on sight, often, but sometimes they would just tell you to stand still. And if you did stand still, they wouldn't kill you. You complied with their order and they would probably wait for backup for someone to come to arrest you. And this is the part I, I loved about this game. If one of your guys got nabbed that way, you could still save them. You could organize a jailbreak within the mission you were already in. Granted, that would mean you would be set back a lot and you would lose for the time being one of your characters. That's not something you wanted because he, this game never gave you, well not never, but most of the time, at least in the later missions, didn't give you more than you needed. Each of the characters you had was an individual, one with a certain set of abilities acquired through special training. You had Tiny, the Green Beret that could carry things and people, 
you could use him to put exploding barrels next to enemy buildings and fortifications and just blow them up like that. He also had a tool that let him hide under the snow and a device that made noise. There was the demo man, if I remember right, could rig corpses to look like they were actually still moving, so it would seem that everything was okay, but for the most part he had traps, bombs, and pliers to cut wire fences. He had a spy that could disguise himself as a German officer or just inject people with lethal poison. He had the only guy that could swim, he also had a boat and a harpoon. The sniper who had very few bullets, my god. I remember cheating in the expansion by giving him infinite bullets and every mission was a cakewalk. If that guy had brought more bullets in combat, there would have been no Third Reich. He could just mow down everybody. His weapon didn't make any noise, again, not that it mattered because the noise weapons made wasn't all that relevant in the first game. He also had a driver that could drive the vehicles that would sometimes appear on the map. Vehicles that, uh, well, some of them were bulletproof, some of them were tanks, but for the most part it would blow up. He also had a submachine gun and from time to time there would be several other characters that would pop up from mission to mission with different abilities. They weren't part of the commandos, they were more of the local resistance. Like every good stealth game, Commandos was sort of a puzzle. You had to figure out how you can best use the individual abilities that these characters had in order to achieve your objective, and to do it with the best efficiency possible, because at the end you would get a score, depending on your time, depending on the damage you took, you would also get some statistics about what enemies you killed, how many buildings you blew up, and so on. I have to say that Commandos isn't as easy to play as I remember it being, possibly because in the past few years there have been quite a few improvements in the field of controls. Not that Commandos didn't have some good controls. Well, no, that, that's, that's wrong. Commandos gave you tools. Commandos gave you superb tools. You could split the screen into six or eight individual components, each with their own zoom level, each with their own location, each that could track a different unit in different parts of the map. It gave you a lot of tools that would let you achieve your goal on a resolution that would currently be laughed at if you found it on a mobile phone. But in terms of actual controls, actual quick, incisive controls for the abilities your characters had, it wasn't that great. And it all boils down to the hotkeys, where they were put. You couldn't rebind them, they were, they were what they were. You just had to remember that H was for hand, not for harpoon, X was for knife, not C, which was for crawl, and you basically had to remember all of these because clicking on the very beautiful icons, like, it, it, gotta mention this, graphics wise this game was superb, it was fantastic, it was fabulous, it still looks amazing unless you zoom in, and the icons with the characters in the corner and their backpack, that was a superb part of this game, that, that gave it so much feeling. But if you stood around and clicked on everything you wanted to use instead of using a hotkey, you would not do well, especially in the expansion. The incredibly brutal expansion that would just kill you outright in 5 seconds if you weren't careful. And coming back to those controls, I mention them because I recently played uh, the sort of spiritual successor to Commandos. Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, which I'm gonna do a show about soon. It has MOBA, well, League of Legends style shortcut keys. Clearly visible, you see what they are, you know what they do, they're the same for all your characters, and it's the greatest thing ever. It's simple, it's intuitive, everything is where it always will be, and if Commandos 1 just had that, just had a simplified version of the hotkeys, yeah, I think that would still make it quite playable today. Not that it's not playable, it's just not as easy. In terms of UI design, I mean, and controls, it's, it's okay that it's not easy in terms of difficulty. Commandos had a lot of a lot of sequels for one, uh, the the last one being a sort of more first-person-ish, shooter-ish type-ish game. And it also had copycats, good ones. The Desperado series was superb. I especially liked the ability to coordinate actions between characters, which is something you couldn't do in Commandos unless you were really, really fast. Commandos would be a really good place for StarCraft pros to train their micro-skills, is what I'm getting at. And Desperados had its 
its own sequels, and then there was the Robin Hood game, and then there was the Star Trek game, and then there was, well, there's Blades of the Shogun. This type of game sort of vanished about 14 years ago, and then really didn't come back until 2016, at the end of 2016. Not that it wasn't profitable, according to the developer Pyro Studios, now dubbed Pyro Mobile, Commandos as a series has sold over 8 million copies. Which kind of makes you wonder, well, why aren't you making more of them now? We have tablets that this kind of game could really benefit from. Well, we, we had tablets, the market is probably dead now. Yet yeah, the post-PC age took about 5 minutes and now it's dead. But at least we do have some people making games, well, a game in the vein of Commandos now. I really want to encourage you to give this series a try. You can find all the Commandos games on GOG, on Steam, you can get it right now, well, the first one in its expansion for just five and a half euros of GOG, or you can get the second and third one in one single package for less than 10 euros. They are very good games with very good graphics. Like in terms of style, in terms of detail, these games have aged well. Like most good pixel art games and even, even the 3D in the third one looks kind of okay-ish. Also, do give Desperados a try as well. Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please consider watching some of our other videos and maybe sharing them or giving a thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you really, really liked what you saw, please check out our Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you could help us make much better shows and get some rewards in the process. Or you could consider buying my book called Tale of Doom. Volume 1 is out now and available for just two dollars and as always if you thought it was horrible you know where to find me and complain about it